G'day mates, Salty Paris here, and today I'm going to be talking to you about one of the more controversial things introduced in Dragon Ball Fighters Season 3, the C Assists. We're going to be covering the basics and, you know, some tips and tricks for C Assists to help you out and make a more informed decision on whether you want a C Assist on your team. So before we start, I'd just like to quickly mention that all combos I do in this video are meant to just be, you know, cool concepts, you know, just some experimentation for stuff you can do with CSS just to get your mind thinking about what you can do. They're not meant to be optimal things you should be copying and going out and doing right away. Just, you know, cool things to think about. So CSS have a few things in common. Uh, the most notorious thing is their increased cooldown. A and B assists have a five in-game second cooldown, but in contrast to that, CSS have a 12 second cooldown. This is a pretty massive downgrade, so you're probably wondering, what do they do to make up for it? And uh, just on a quick side note, it's important to mention in-game seconds, since certain cinematics like some supers do stop the timer, so no assists are recovering during that time. All non-projectile C assists will track the opponent's position horizontally on screen. They all have an extra attack that only gets performed on hit, but they knock the opponent down for an easy extension. And they tend to have slow startup, but they speed up on the opponent's in hit stuff, which, combined with the extra hit, makes them excellent combo extenders. So what do C-Assists actually do? C-Assists can be broken down into a few major groups with some smaller outliers. The largest group is what I call the String Assists. These all perform two attacks on block or whiff with a third attack on hit, and they are standardized to 45 frame startup and 50 frame block stun. Having such high block stun makes them pretty great pressure assists. I mean, it's almost as high as Kid Buu A's 58 frames and even more than Gotenks A's 46 frames. And those are pretty notorious mix-up assists. So you're definitely getting some good mix off these ones. Being a 3 hit C assist also makes them great combo extenders since you've got a lot of time to set stuff up or key charge while the opponent's being hit. However, it's important to note if they get reflected, their second attack will miss, so you have to keep that in mind, they're not quite as good at covering reflect. Since they all have the same frame data across the board, the only real difference between them is the hitboxes and the attacks they're performing, and they all tend to lead with a big horizontal attack, so there's not that much you really have to consider between these ones. Next up is the Vertical Tracking Assists. These ones not only track your opponent's horizontal position, but their vertical one as well, meaning nowhere on the screen is safe for your opponent. These all have 60 frames startup, but they vary in block stun, so your choice here matters a little more than with the String Assists. These ones are pretty notable for the screen control they give you by making things like Super Jump Key Blast or Beam scary for the opponent to do, because at any time they try it, you know, Goku Black could appear and buff them and kick them in the head. They also give you a pretty incredible combo extension because they appear anywhere on the screen, similar to, you know, Gurutenks A and Janemba A in Season 2, which were pretty well known as incredible combo extension assists. However, as of Season 3, a bunch of assists now have air property attached to them, meaning moves with air invincibility such as crouching heavies will go straight through them. All the vertical tracking assists, apart from Gogeta, Vegito, and Hit, can be anti-air. This means you might want to be a bit more careful when approaching behind them, since the cautious opponent could anti-air your assist and then cancel them or something to hit your approach. This doesn't work against Gogeta, you know, because he comes in, does his Gallic Gun, which is a beam, can't be anti-aired, and the opponent will get hit. So, something to think about there. Hit is a bit different from the others here, because he does two hits on block and he himself doesn't move, you know, most of these assists teleport above the opponent and then punch them themselves. But, you know, his startup and his properties match up with the rest, so I decided to just group him here. Beam assists are the next biggest group of C assists. These ones are pretty easy to cover because they mostly function the same as the usual Super Saiyan Goku, Goku Black, Kamehameha assists you're all familiar with. Except of course, if the beam connects, they are a C assist, so the assists will follow up here, they knock that attack, making it really easy to convert off mid-screen. You know, compared to the usual Kamehameha, you call it, the opponent gets knocked all the way to the corner, you got a super dash to convert properly, you don't really get a full combo. Not the case with the C beams, very easy to combo off. The beam assists don't do the tracking teleport thing that C assists normally do, so you don't have to worry about your beam moving before it actually gets fired off. They do still get the fastest setup in combos though. Outside of combos, they're all about mid 30 frames in setup, you know, 34, 35, 36, around that range, varies a bit depending on the distance, and they have about 30 frame box stun. With the exception of Dragon Ball Super Broly, whose beam starts up at 40 frames, this is a bit slow unfortunately. But you can mostly treat them the same as you would a normal beam assist in neutral or pressure apart from the combo extension again. Anti-air assists are the last major group of C assists. These ones all start up in 45 frames and like the name suggests, they all have anti-air properties. So they will invincibility through most airborne moves that are projectiles. This combined with their tracking and, of course, huge hit stun, 
can be used to try and scare your opponent out of pressing buttons in the air. They peak at 29 frames of block stun, however, so they aren't the best for pressure. And the slowness they have means you have to use them a bit more in prediction and reaction, which isn't really what you want in anti-airing. And of course, if you call them and the opponent just blocks them, now you're going to deal with a long cooldown. So they can be a bit annoying to use. The remaining C assists are relatively unique. Videl and Super Saiyan Vegeta both have their invincible DPs as C assists. The invincibility doesn't kick in until after they teleport, so you can interrupt them when the opponent calls them, but as soon as they teleport to you, the only way to interrupt it is to hit the point character. Otherwise, you just gotta block it. Beerus C assist is also invincible, but it works a bit differently to Videl and Super Saiyan Vegeta. The invincibility on his doesn't last very long, making it more interruptible, and it only fires key blasts, so beams and other stronger projectiles can just knock him out of it. However, he does pretty much cover the screen in projectiles, and if any of them hit, he'll follow up, so it's pretty good for space control and pretty easy to combo off. The other thing to keep in mind is, being Key Blasts, the opponent can also Super Dash through them or Guard Cancel Reflect them. Zed Broly's C Assist is, instead of Invincible, Armored. He does his big Armored Lariat, absorbs some hits, and then if he hits the opponent, he stomps them back into the ground. While the long cooldown does make it difficult to use as a neutral tool, I think the armor and the wide screen coverage it gives do give it some potential. Freeze's C Assist is his standing heavy on point, and point blank it has a pretty fast start of 25 frames, and from a distance it functions as a solid slow projectile that you can rush down behind. Also keeps the usual C Assist follow up on him. It kind of reminds me of Doctor Doom's Molecular Shield, you know it's a fast pressure assist if you're close off, it's a slow projectile you can run behind if you're far away, but that might also just be the aesthetic similarities making me all nostalgic. Kepler's C Assist is one of the most interesting to me, as she's completely projectile invincible when she starts spinning the key in front of her. Not just key blasts, beams as well. Which, you know, lets her shield you from projectiles to an extent. That would be pretty interesting already, but the thing is, she also has a gap in between the hits of her assist on block. Right away, that probably sounds like a drawback because, you know, you're probably thinking the opponent can just get a guaranteed reflect on your assist. But the thing is, the gap is big enough that you can go for a cross up attempt, which would mean your opponent has to guess which direction to reflect in the first place. If your cross up attempt works out, Kepler's a C assist, so she'll follow up with another hit, making it really easy to convert off as well. So you can even go for a cross-off attempt that would normally be pretty hard to convert off by yourself. And while you're doing that, you know, you're, you're relatively shielded by Kepler since she's still got that second hit to do. I think, overall, it's a pretty interesting assist. It's used a bit differently from other ones, but I could see it being quite good in certain situations. Now that we've covered the basics, let's look at some of the tricks to making C assists better. The obvious drawback of C assist is their massive cooldown. Definitely annoying. But there are a few ways you can try to mitigate that. Although an assist being on cooldown stops you high tagging to them, you can still DHC through them, or Ultimate Zed Chain, as it's called in Dragon Ball Fighters. Assists recover faster post DHC as long as you went through them. So, calling hit assist, then DHC into hit, then DHC into GT Goku, will result in hit cooldown going by really quickly. But if you go straight to GT Goku, you gotta deal with the whole hit cooldown. This means that if you've got a character with strong Alki post super, or perhaps some DHC synergy, you can get their C assist online more often. The other main way to reset cooldowns is, of course, killing a character. When someone dies, all assists reset, so the increased combo potential of C assists can also help getting them back, you know? If you uh, can get more damage off a C assist, that means you can kill earlier, which means you can get the C assist back earlier. It's a little bit of a loophole, because obviously you need the C assist up in the first place to do a combo extension with the C assist, but you know, it's a nice option to have. If you think about this in terms of team building, this means there are a few situations where C assists might be a bit more tempting, such as on a point character you want to get back in as soon as possible. Say you got a team built around Janemba, you know, you've picked up perfect assist for Janemba, you've got some really cool setups labbed out with him, and you got to tag him out to heal him, of course, but you want him right back in as soon as he's done healing, so you can do some cool orb setup you labbed out, right? In this situation, Janemba C might be a good idea. You know, he's got long blocks done, 50 frames, so you can call him, do a good mix-up opportunity with some non-Janemba character you're playing, and then if the mix-up works out, you can end the combo by bringing Janemba back in, you know? You don't have to deal with the cooldown. The other main option I mentioned was DHC Synergy. A lot of people stopped caring about DHC Synergy after they removed double supers, but there's actually still a lot of cool stuff you can do. So if we use an example of a pairing like Gogeta and Adult Gohan, you could use Gogeta's C Assist, the Gallic Gun, as a um, cool neutral tool or combo extension, and then at the end of the combo you could DHC to Gogeta's Big Bang coming coming half, then immediately that Adult Gohan's potential unleashed. This lets Gohan combo into an Air Dragon Rush and gets him a knockdown. So, you leveled up Gohan, you've got a good situation after the combo, and you've reset Gogeta's cooldown. This is another team building situation where, I think, to me at least, C assists feel a bit more enticing. 
So, with all that said and done, what are sea assists actually good for? Well, besides the obvious, such as using the beam assist as a beam assist and the pressure assist as pressure assist, there's some things that might not be obvious to you right away. Sea assists speed up to the extremely quick 20 frame startup while the opponent is in hit stun, and they keep their tracking. That's the same as Yamcha A assist, by the way, notoriously fast. This means you can try and use them to hit confirm things you otherwise might not get much of. You know, a stray jumping key blast is difficult to convert off with most assists, and it hits in a weird spot, so you're probably not getting much more than a vanish or a super dash combo, right? But since the assist is so fast and they track, you can try and wait and see if the key blast hits, then call the C assist. If the key blast does hit, and you call the C assist, you'll get a full combo because the C assist is really, really easy to confirm off. And that's a lot of damage off what would normally not be not that much and loss of meter, you know? Since you're waiting to hit confirm it, that means you don't have to call the assist if it gets blocked as well. That way the assist can stay off cooldown and you can hold the threat of a combo off that straight key blast. Of course, if you want to pressure the opponent as well, you can just call it on block and run up and keep going. Another thing to think about is that not all characters are getting the same level of conversion off assists. That probably sounds silly, but most characters will be able to use C assists to work a key charge into their combos, which is already pretty big. That's free meter you wouldn't be getting with other assists, right? Some characters with bigger setup moves, such as Beerus Truth and Success, Base Goku Black and Genki, and Zamas Blades of Judgment, can use C assist to convert into really big damage. The damage potential with these characters goes massively up from using a C assist, so I definitely think it's got some potential there. I also think it's worth experimenting with C assist for your team, just to see what kind of dumb damage you can get off them, or maybe even just the TODs opened up by the ability to key charge with combo. You know, maybe you had some TODs with your team that were just a little too much meter to be practical, but with the ability to key charge, maybe that pushes them into the practical range. It's worth taking a look, I think. So that's all for this video. I know we were just scratching the surface on the potential of C assists. I mean, some characters have some wild things they can do with them. But I really hope this video has helped some newer players to DBFC, you know, maybe figure out the potential there, or maybe even some veterans who are struggling to see the appeal of an assist with a long cooldown. I'm really excited to see how the meta develops in the future, and where C assists will be in it, if at all. You know, maybe the cooldown is too much of a restriction, we'll just have to wait and see. I've got some more DBFZ basics and guide videos planned for the near future, so if you enjoyed this one and found it helpful, you can help me out by liking, commenting, and subscribing. Sorry for having to say that, but you know. Uh, you'll also get to see stream highlights from the Salty Paris Squid stream here on this channel, mostly Dragon Ball Fighters matches, so if any of that interests you, you could try subscribing for that as well. Um, this is my first Dragon Ball Fighters guide in a very long time, so if you have any critique for the video, please let me know. Um, I'm sure there's a hundred thousand things I did wrong, and I'd really like to improve them for next time, so please, <laughs> anything you didn't like, let me know. Um, either way, thank you very much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this video or find it helpful. Bye-bye!